Hello, I'm Graham Lewis, and in this short video, I'm going to explain two transformations, f of absolute value of x and absolute value of f of x, and how those can be written as piecewise functions. So let's start by considering the absolute value of f of x. So this function will be the absolute value of 2x, x minus 3 for the graph I've got on the left there. So what does this do? Let's consider a point. Let's consider the point 2. So let's input 2 into our function. When we input 2 into f, the output we can see from inputting it into the equation or on the graph is minus 4. What happens when I input it into absolute value of f of x? So the absolute value of f of, min of positive 2 is equal to um, absolute value of minus 4, because that's the output, which gives me positive 4. So what's happening here is it's taking the negative y value of minus 4, it's at taking the absolute value of that and changing it into a positive y value, which is a reflection across the x-axis. Another way of thinking about it is you're taking the value minus 4 and you're multiplying it by minus 1 to make it positive when you're doing the absolute value function. This is actually a little bit helpful because we know that a reflection about the x-axis can be written as minus f of x. And that will help us write this as a piecewise function, which I'm going to do now. So if we want to write the absolute value of f of x as a piecewise function for this particular function, the absolute value of f of x, then clearly we have three parts. We've got x is smaller than 0. We've got 0 is smaller than or equal to x, smaller than or equal to 3. I'm just choosing uh, 0 and 3 to be included there. And we've got x is bigger than. 3. So when x is smaller than 0, the y values are already all positive. So taking the absolute value of them will make no difference at all. It will stay the same as f of x, the original function. However, between 0 and 3, these y values here are all negative. So when you take the absolute value of them, they're going to get reflected in the x-axis. So a reflection in the x-axis is actually minus f of x. And then for x bigger than 3, the y values are again all positive, so it will remain the same as f of x. So that's what it would look like as a piecewise function. And then we can actually put in the actual equation. So it's equal to um, positive f of x in this part of the graph when x is less than 0, so that's just 2x, x minus 3. For x bigger than 3, it's also equal to f of x because the absolute value of positive numbers remains positive. But where the graph is negative, for y values, it gets reflected across the x-axis, and that is minus 2x, x minus 3. And we could probably tidy that up a little bit and write that as 2x, 3 minus x, which is a bit more pretty. So 2x, 3 minus x. And there we have the absolute value of f of x written as a piecewise function. Notice that 0 and 3, um, we actually have cusps. Um, so that is an interesting thing, our corners, um, and that is that uh, the slope is obviously not defined at those points. f of absolute value of x is also another interesting transformation. Let's consider a point again. We'll consider our old friend inputting 2, and the first thing we're going to do is find the absolute value of 2. Well, the absolute value of 2 is still 2. It doesn't change, so f of absolute value of 2 is just f of 2, and we know from earlier that's negative 4. So that's quite interesting that the f of absolute value of x can output negative y values, which was different to our earlier transformation. Now let's have a look at minus 2. If I input minus 2, aha, it's not going to let you. Well, it will let you, but the first thing it will do is make it a positive 2, because the absolute value of minus 2 is 2. So interestingly, when I try to input a negative number, the first thing it will do is make it positive and give the same output as if I inputted positive 2, which is clearly minus 4. So when I input minus 2, I get the same output of minus 4. When I input minus 3, it's going to make it a positive and give me the same output. So you can see that when I input the negative x values, I'm going to get a reflection across the y-axis. So if x is negative, I'm going to get a reflection across the y-axis, 
So that means that f of absolute value of x, we know from earlier work that a reflection across the y-axis can be written as f of minus x. If x is positive, then f of absolute value of x, while taking the absolute value of positive numbers doesn't change it, it's identical to f of x. So we can actually get uh, this transformation uh, written as a piecewise function for any function, and in particular this one. So in general, for any um, piecewise, uh, for any f of absolute value of x function, we can write it as a piecewise function in two parts. Clearly, if x is less than 0, it's going to equal f of minus x because it's a reflection across the y-axis. Clearly, if x is bigger than 0, it's going to be identical to f of x because the absolute values of positive numbers are still positive. So that's true for any um, function f when you do the transformation f of absolute value of x. So in this particular instance, what we have is f of absolute value of x in our two parts if I input minus x, it's going to be 2 brackets minus x, brackets minus x minus 3. And then if you factor out a minus x quickly, you can tidy that up to 2x, x plus 3, which is a bit more beautiful. So for the left-hand part of the graph, it's going to equal 2x, x plus 3, where x is smaller than 0. So make sure I get my intersections right, roughly like that. And for x bigger than 0, it's going to be exactly the same as the function was originally. So 2x, x minus 3. And I'll put the 0 value there. And uh, again, similar to earlier, we do have uh, a slope that's undefined at x equals 0. So the final graph is the one in green there. And of course, that is an even function. As it is symmetrical cross the y-axis and f of minus x equals f of x, which is the definition of an even function. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this short video, and if you did, please watch some of my other videos.